All right, guys. Uh, so here we go. It's Pig going up against Eric. Uh, Pig was originally a Zerg player. He plays random now. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, <laughs> oh, my man. I see some troll in the chat. Dude, you don't actually understand how things can be rock, paper, scissors. So really just shut your mouth. Uh, anyways, getting into this. It is Dragon Scales. Uh, very quick drone scout here. I think Eric's trying to figure out what race pig is. And uh, as he gets up here, he's going to see, oh, it's a Zerg player. Uh, you know, Pig is quite good at all the matchups. Like, he really does know how to how to play them all. He's done a very good job uh, practicing all the races and playing a lot of random. Uh, he's definitely shown some great games in every matchup. And he knows where he's strong. He knows where he's weak. So uh, we'll see. I, I mean, I haven't watched a lot of Pig playing recently, just a little bit. Because obviously he's not like pro gamer level, but he's actually, he's quite strong, right? So uh, being originally a Zerg player anyways, I think he's going to show us, uh, the you know, it, it just strong CBZ in general. And of course, being a professional caster, like the, almost the only thing you cast in StarCraft 2 is CBZ anyways, right? So he really knows the strats. All right. Yeah, Eric is uh, a, a very strong player from South America. He's from um, Brazil. So just throwing that out there. Oh, by the way, I do want to know what people are thinking as far as um, the, the volume here. Music volume check. Uh, perfect too low too high turn down a little too high turn down a lot all right so go ahead and and just type your your answer here in this poll and we'll we'll get this fixed uh to whatever people think is it perfect is it too low is it too high should we turn down a little bit I actually meant to type in uh, turn it down a lot is another one as well. Uh, in my own headset, it sounds like maybe just a little bit too high. But uh, guys, go ahead and vote in that real quick, and we'll get that fixed while we wait for this ZVZ uh, to warm up. It'll it'll be about two minutes after I typed him up that it would be able to do it since we're on a little bit of a delay here. Um, yeah, I mean, I know my voice is quite loud, but looks like 40% perfect. And 53% too high. Okay. So it looks like it's chilling right about there. We'll turn it down just a little bit. All right. So that'll be fixed in about two minutes, probably. Uh, anyways, anyways, let's take a look at where we're at in this game. Sorry about that. Just trying to reel this in a little bit. Get it just perfect. Okay, so the Roach Warren coming up here for Pig. His hatchery is finished, but he doesn't really have the units to hold this off. So it looks like Eric's aggression here going to do a really, really good job. Eric is making some roaches behind this as well. Pig is trying to buy time for this hatchery, but obviously that's not going to end up working there. Uh, just did not have the link count that he needed. Now, trying to engage along with uh, some of those broodlings there, uh, but yeah, that's not going to end up working out. Does kill off the rest of those lings. A fair amount of roach is being made from Eric, though. And Pig instantly retakes his third. Starts his lair up as well. He is not making units, though. Okay, he runs up and he sees the roaches, and he's going to see no third base. So Pig has to get very defensive now. He, like, these five drones he's making, it's a little bit over the top. We'll see. Like, I wouldn't mind him putting down a spine crawler at his natural. I feel like a full-blown attack at his third forces a cancel here. Uh, we'll see about that. Eric is making a hell of a lot of lings. 
And Pig actually cancels out a building. I believe that that was an Evo. Anyways, a little counterattack comes in. Very smart move here from Pig. Gets rid of that queen immediately. It was not perfectly placed. And kills a couple lings. Now going after the drones. This is a real pain in the butt. Like, Eric is already very, very long drones. Now here comes a massive roach attack up into the natural. Definitely a very good choice. The, the drones 100% have to be pulled here for Pig. Like, he needs to eliminate these roaches. And even if he loses half his drones or even all of his drones here, there might still be some potential uh, for him. So he drops down. He's six drones below where Eric's at. His third hatchery finishes, so that is going to give him a little bit more larva-wise. And he is making a lot of roaches right now, whereas Eric is actually droning up. So this might open up a window where Pig can roll across the map and do a counterattack. And there's that sound. <laughs> As I told you, two minutes later. <laughs> we'll see if that's a bit better for everyone, guys. Thank you, Mapu. Appreciate it. Uh, now, Eric has his layer halfway done, getting into that plus one ranged attack. He does have the double Evo. That's more of a wall than anything, but does not start a secondary attack there. Or a secondary upgrade, rather, like a carapace. 40 drones of 28. Like, Pig, Pig needs to make something happen at this point, I would say. Now, he's making a round of 10 drones. This is the funny thing about ZBZ, right? Like, we have these weird amounts of units. Oh, no. Oh, no. He turned his roaches around. Huh. Well, he did force a couple of spines, and he did force some more roaches. Now, the fact that he turned around once, and then he turned around again to attack, that's literally your attack will never do anything at this point. So I hope he doesn't even try to, to pull this off, because it literally doesn't make sense. Now... You can see that Eric uh, canceled the two spines, so he realized that the units were going back, and Pig turns around. So see, this is what I'm talking about. This is actually, this is good play from Pig. The fact that he went again and then went back, like it would have been better for him to just not turn around at all and just go up and poke and then turn around. But this is okay. Uh, you do want to uh, try to get your opponent to make as many units as as few uh, workers as possible. Now, Eric is still up nine workers, and his workers came out earlier. Pig, 10 of those workers Pig just made. So his economy, not super good. Uh, the Overseer, trying to get into Scout, doesn't see that upcoming Spire from Eric. But anytime you're on two base and you're going Lair, it's either Nidus or it's uh, Spire. And Nidus wouldn't really make sense here. So I'm sure that Pig has a good idea that this is a Spire build. Eric has a lot of production going on right now. Oh my god, that's so cute. You see that? How he hit all the roaches on the side from that overseer? Very sneaky move here from Pig. Uh, definitely macroing heavily into those roaches. A bunch of uh, overlords popping out now, so can spend his supply on the roaches a little bit more. He's done a good job hiding them. That's for sure. I'm a little bit nervous because one, plus one attack, like plus one range is a very good attack for roaches. So that's definitely going to give Eric a bit of an advantage. And he does have Mutas coming out. And the thing is, like, his third base is done if Pig wants to go after it. He cannot prevent that from dying. But I don't know that it's a big deal because he's about to have Mutalisks. Not just Mutas, but 1-1 one, one Roach. So he can retake it rather quickly. Now, plus one is done. Pig starts to go up the ramp. First Muta comes out. I mean, one Muta doesn't really stop Roaches, but it's a huge arc of Roaches at the top of the ramp here for Eric. Pig continues to attack forward. He's up 16 roaches right now, which are... 16 roaches is better than three mutas. Obviously, over time, the mutas will give you that sort of value, but he's going up into a concave, and there's plus one of these roaches. So, uh, Eric, I think, does end up holding this, but Pig is not wrong to try to do this trade, and yeah, GG, well played, is called. Uh, not too surprised there. The real crucial moment was when Eric got the third hatchery, right? Like, that's a that's a pretty big moment there. Um, then his roach attack came up. Pig ends up holding by sacrificing a bunch of drones. And doesn't actually do the counterattack. Starts to and then turns around. Turns around again. And it's like he didn't even fully force the spines. So... Why do you just sacrifice those roaches? There's no coming back at that point. Like, Pig was dead. Pig was dead. 
Uh, Eric just, he had better tech, he had better upgrades, he had Mutalisks. Mutalisks are really strong in the matchup. Not as strong as in StarCraft 1, but they're still very good. Uh, and he, he had, the only advantage he had was a Roach number. That's it. So he needed to make that work. And he couldn't, so he left. That's, it's the right way to play it, honestly. Like, a Pig, uh, took stock of what was going on. And, yeah, it went with the right decision, I think. Could have gone for Roach Hydra. Well, you can when you're playing against Muta, but not in that particular position. His position was very weak, right? No upgrades. His economy was weaker. It was just, it, things were not good. A more even position? Yes, you can do that. But also, in the more even position, a lot of times you're going to do that Roach attack anyways and split them up. Uh, but yeah, he was he was grasping for straws there, for sure. So we'll get into uh, the second game here. See what Pig can do with random this time. Are SC2 Hydras better than StarCraft 1s? They're different. They're pretty different. They function really differently. In StarCraft 1, they're like one supply. They're like this very fast, microable unit. They've been patching them in StarCraft 2 recently, where they're a little bit quicker, a little bit better micro-wise and stuff, but um, they are more expensive and more supply. It's definitely a different feel. It's a higher tech unit as well in StarCraft 2. It's like you can get it on hatchery in StarCraft 1. So... All right, we're going to jump into game two. As you can see, Pig playing random. Eric going with his Zerg. Yeah, I'm glad that you're enjoying ASL so far, guys. Uh, the uh, round of 16 starts this week. We have uh, group selection being uh, translated, but that's going to take a while. In fact, I would be surprised if we don't have group A out before the group selection, which is kind of funny. <laughs> and we should make a post about that on the Patreon, but yeah. Anyways, uh, in the bottom right, we have Pig. As you see, he rolled Protoss. And in the top left of Gresspawn here, we have Eric. Uh, look at Pig. Trying to be a pro player again and hosting without the mod for the drone kills. Mapu has a lot to say here. Uh, <laughs> so guys, if you're confused what he's talking about, so the players generally end up hosting uh, for their matches and tournaments like this, and if they don't put the mod on that uh, we normally use for observing pro games where it shows like worker kill counts and stuff, then we don't get that. So it's just like a funny thing because it's, it's like this meme that the pros like always forget to host it on that. They just host it like it's a private one versus one game. Anyways, uh, Pig being a commentator should know better. So, so, uh, there is the offensive hatchery <laughs> from Eric. Uh, it's a, it's a good play in StarCraft 2. Uh, and there's a few different ways you can go about it. Now, Pig did not pull four probes. The standard against this is to pull four probes immediately to dive on the hatchery to stop it from finishing. Now, you can let it finish. You can play it and let it finish. The problem is, if you let it finish then generally a queen will get out and lay a creep tumor, which means that you're going to need detection to be able to remove the creep. And that's where it gets annoying. So a lot of people like to end the hatchery before a queen can get out, and you can't really do that unless you pull more probes early on. So we'll see uh, if that if that pays off or not. Some nice uh, hatchery blocking there from Pig. This could end up being kind of nice where you split the hatcheries with that block on the pylon uh one of the older ways that we used to deal with uh offensive hatcheries in this matchup is you would go to zealot to adept and go across the map after you kill the hatchery and that's like such a good anti-ling force because generally with a build like this your zergling speed is a lot uh slower and like if you split the hatcheries like this then adepts become a lot stronger and queens can't go between the bases to defend. So a lot of times you could get some damage done like that. Now, 
Uh, the two zealots are, are doing a pretty darn good job. I love that zealot skin, by the way. But there's the queen. See, this is the real problem. See how it's running far away to put that down? Now, the links will come up and buy time on these zealots so that the creep tumor can get underground and be cloaked. Because right now, it's not. You could technically target it. But watch. See? Bam. It's gone. You don't see it anymore. So now he's going to need detection to be able to build a nexus. I believe that's close enough that the creep that comes off of it should just barely stop the nexus from being built. Now Ling's come in and go after the pylon. Oh crap, Pig loses. That's the game. He lost the pylon. Oh man. GG. Well. A bit anticlimactic. 